Well, hey there, guys. I am shooting my first YouTube video ever, and I'm so excited. This is going to be fantastic. Um, sorry in advance for the audio because I just figured out that my lapel mic doesn't just plug into the GoPro. You got to get an adapter thing, so apologies. Um, just want to do a quick tour of the van that I live in. It's been a long time since, well, it feels like a long time since I bought it. Uh, just over a year ago, and I've been wanting to get this YouTube channel started and start putting some videos up. So, um, here she is. This is a 99 Explorer 230 XLW, and I bought this from a dealer in San Francisco, and I live here in Atlanta, um, so I actually had it shipped all the way. Uh, from San Francisco and sorry it's kind of dirty right now it's been rainy here in Atlanta um, it's built on a Dodge Ram van chassis and it's a let me think 5.9 liter V8 so nice powerful engine also a gas guzzler but that is the price of having a big engine to drive your house around I suppose I would have preferred a diesel, but those were just a bit too expensive for me. Um, I have lived in this full time since last August, and it's May, it's the end of May now. So, um, what, well, with that said, I've lived in it full time, but I've had some uh, little breaks from living in the van. I've traveled to Europe for six weeks and mostly been parked at people's houses and so forth but it's only just been a week that i've actually been uh, dry camping or boondocking like i am here behind my office which is kind of cheating i suppose but my boss doesn't know so maybe it counts uh, just a quick tour on the outside these wonderfully ugly vents are for the refrigerator that i'll show you when we get to the inside of the van and it works on propane or electric so those are the ventilation fans. This is for my propane furnace, which I never used in the winter. I used an electric heater instead. Uh, 120 volt outlets. This is my hot water heater. Um, this is six gallon and it's uh, propane. And I've done a good bit of work on that. I'll post other videos in the future on what I've done and why and so forth. And it's definitely difficult to clasp. There we go. Uh, I call this my basement. This is my large storage area. And the tray completely slides out. I have a bunch of junk in there because yesterday I moved some stuff out of a friend's garage that I'm moving to my storage unit. But this tray slides completely out. And it's usually mostly empty. Um, I just keep some uh, clear plastic bins in there for anything you normally would put in a household trunk. And above the basement this goes all the way to the other side this small area and it's really great for going camping I have fishing rods I put in there this table I just recently bought it's fantastic it folds in half and it pulls out and it sets up into a nice uh, table that you can change the height on that's pretty cool uh, in the back this is it's just a small storage area but I use these wheel chocks if I'm parked somewhere for a longer period of time I've got a little portable air compressor, which I primarily use, not for the tires, but for my Firestone airbags, which they are located here to actually fill them or release air. Those are um, added shocks for the back axle to make it a more comfortable ride. And then on the side here, I won't open this right now, but um, this is my Onan 2800 generator and it only had 50 some odd hours when I bought the van, which is practically new. I think I have about 150 hours on it now. So if I'm out and about, uh, park somewhere where I'm not plugged in, which is now all the time, if I need to generate electricity, uh, 120 volts specifically, like for my microwave, then I can start that from inside the van. And it's not too terribly noisy, but I'm hoping to upgrade that sometime this summer uh, little outlets here this is to fill my water tank I have a 26 gallon fresh water tank that sits under the bed and this is if I'm connected directly to a water hose maybe at someone's house or to campground 
That way I can uh, not use my water pump, I can just use the pressure from the hose. So both of those are basically for fresh water. Um, these are goofy. I guess in the late 90s it was a thing to have a cable jack and a landline jack, but don't foresee using those. And then this is for actually what they call shore power. So if I'm at someone's house or at a campground and I want to plug directly in, which is always nice, it's 30 amp service inside the van. And down here where you see some little drips coming out is the wastewater pipe. Now you might wonder why do I have it open and why is it dripping in the middle of a parking lot and I'll get to that when we get inside the van, but I do not have any true sewage in the van. That was one of the first upgrades I did. And this little panel is what would open and close my gray water tank and my black water tank. I don't have a black water tank anymore because I don't have black water, which is raw sewage. I only have gray water, which is just from the shower and the sink. And using biodegradable soap means, for the most part, you're good to go wherever you're at, as long as you're not breaking any laws or ordinances and that type of thing. And that is, for the most part, the outside of the van. So we'll come around to the inside where the living is done. And I'll show you guys how I live. By the way, these two side windows, I just tinted these myself a couple weeks ago with a really cheap uh, tint, and it's just a temporary solution right now. As you can tell, it looks pretty junky, but it's 5% tint, which is quite dark. Um, and then, of course, I also have this nice awning that I can crank out, and I do enjoy using that if I'm in a place that I can have an awning. Put my little camp chair out and hang out outside. Pref always prefer to be outside than inside. So, here is the inside of the van. It's a little bit dark at the moment, so bear with me. I think I have a little light here. There we go. So, first on the left, obviously you see this is my kitchen. I have the tiniest sink in the world. Well, no, that's the second tiniest sink in the world. I'll show you the tiniest sink in the world in, a, in just a minute. Uh, so, this is where I do all of my dishes and cleaning up and so forth. And this is definitely on my list of projects to upgrade at some point. I want a larger, deeper sink because I can't even fit my, uh, my main frying pan in there. Uh, but I do have, as you see on the taps, I have cold water and hot water. And so just like any normal sink in a normal house, works just great. And then I have my two burner propane stove. And this will work just like a gas stove in a house. You just uh, turn on the, the flame and light it with a... A match and you can cook. In fact, I just made scrambled eggs this morning. It's about eight o'clock in the morning before work for me this morning. Um, added my magnet, which in hindsight, this is not strong enough because if I ever hit something really bumpy, sometimes that little knife falls off, but for the most part, it's good. Here's my little mini fridge, which I like it, but it, it still needs some work. It doesn't quite get cold enough. For safe temperature. I don't have anything in here that would matter at the moment, but as you can see, I've got this little gauge and I should be between 30 and 40 Fahrenheit and I'm closer to high 40s there. So need to work on that some more, but just have some basics in here at the moment. And it does have a little freezer in there. Funny enough, the freezer is very cold and makes ice in a short time. So who knows? Um, if you noticed here in the front, these are sort of ghetto hanging right now. I just put these blackout curtains up about a week ago with some clips and magnets. And that's because only until a week ago did I need to be blacked out at night. Before a week ago, all those months, I was always at a friend's house. And so um, didn't need to be blacked out at night. So this is temporary. I'm hoping in the next week or two to actually uh, put some more permanent blackout curtains in here, which is why I've got this Reflectix on some of the windows and such. Uh, so it works fine for now. It's great blackout material. I bought these from Target for pretty cheap, but that is on the project list and it's got a little curtain opening so I can kind of sneak up and go to the, the front. And so in the front here, it's just like a normal Dodge van, nothing too spectacular. Um, everything you would expect to see in a, in a van. It's in great condition when I bought it, only about 21,000 miles. Being that it's a 99, it's pretty low. 
I think it's only at 25,000 now. So it's been in really good shape for the most part. Now here, this is quite different. When I bought this, there were two uh, large kind of chairs more like wide benches facing one another, uh, sort of like a dinette. And you can see on the floor those those bolts are where they were bolted in. And um, I took them out because they were not very comfortable, but more importantly, I just felt like it was a waste of space. They didn't go all the way to the wall. They were much too wide, but not wide enough for two people by any means. And it was just a waste of really good space. So uh, temporarily I've got my, my camp chair, which is also <laughs> my... Uh, drying rack for my towel at the moment and I just did laundry yesterday which is why my laundry is in that bin but this is an area that I've been brainstorming for months what I'm going to put here whether I'm going to do something similar to this but with a maybe a desk chair that's nice uh, or whether I'm going to buy or even build some sort of a, a couch that sits sideways so this is this is definitely still being brainstormed but th for for my use right now, just the camp chair and the little removable table is just fine. You can use it for my laptop or for eating, so it's not a problem. And as far as these Class B van goes, this is a huge amount of space. There's about five feet from this wall um, to the back of this chair, which, considering the whole van's about 20 feet long, it's a large amount of living space that I'm going to work on. Um, up here, I've got, these are pretty much just standard. This is the... Uh, start and stop for the generator and I've done a lot of uh, maintenance on it and oil change and all kind of stuff so it's in good shape and see 153 hours and these are my gauges which when I just hold down my test button I can see on the far left that's my propane which is full I've got a six gallon propane tank and it lasts me quite a while maybe six weeks to eight weeks my fresh water tank is full my holding tank which was the black water tank, which was for the original marine toilet, is no longer there. So that will always be empty. And then the gray water tank is 99% of the time empty. If I'm in a place where I can't just let the sink or shower water go straight on the ground outside, then I'll, I'll close it up and then dump it later when it's safer. Um, this pump is for my water pump. So for example, right now, if I were to just turn on this water, comes out for a little bit but then it trickles down to nothing and the reason for that is there's nothing that's creating pressure to push my water from my tank that's under my bed which is what this is for so this is my electric water pump it's 12 volt you can maybe hear it just turn on and it'll cycle automatically to always keep a perfect amount of water pressure so that you could never tell whether it's a lot or whether it's a little bit just like in a house. Um, I prefer to keep it off when I'm not using it, but some folks leave it on all the time. And this is for my hot water heater, which I'm actually gonna go ahead and kick on because I'll take a shower uh, shortly before work. And you probably can't hear that turn on, but th there's an electric igniter that automatically lights the propane hot water tank. And that six gallon uh, tank is only in about I don't know, 10 minutes before it's ready to go. There's my alarm to get going. In fact, there's also a hose that goes all the way from the radiator to that hot water tank that's almost at the very back of the van. So when I'm driving, it'll actually automatically start to heat the water from the uh, radiator hose, from the coolant that kind of passes right, uh, right behind it. So that's pretty neat. Uh, put in smoke detector, uh, carbon monoxide detector. Um, I'm, this was a cabinet. I turned it into a bookshelf with some of my favorite books and things like that. Uh, small microwave that I don't use very often. Uh, this fan makes me or breaks me. And when this original broke a few months ago, this replacement, uh, which is by Fantastic Fans, was it's well over 300 bucks, believe it or not, but it's, it's fantastic. It's fantastic. Um, and it's got a little remote that I can take off. It's um, automatic. It'll close if it starts to rain, so I don't have to worry about it raining in the middle of the night. And I can set it on. I think there's 12 different uh, settings on it and so forth. So pretty cool. 
Uh, moving along, this used to be a pull-out pantry. And I really liked it for the first week. <laughs> the problem was this wood pantry that rolled out that had shelves. Anytime I was driving, everything would just fall over. So temporarily, I have these little plastic bins for food. Uh, I'm going to do something a little more permanent in the future. But for now, it suits my needs. And probably what most folks are the most interested in is the bathroom. Now, I chose the Explorer. One of the main reasons is because I wanted a full bathroom if I was going to live in a van. I don't want to be roughing it or feeling like I'm, like I'm camping. Um, I want to have the comforts that I've always had in apartments and houses. So, um, and I do. It's a little bit of a tight fit being that I'm 6'2". But um, here is the bath. This is considered a wet bath, which means the entire area can can get wet and it's okay. <laughs> There's the world's smallest sink right there. Um, but it works great. So this huge toilet that you see was the first upgrade that I did. It had what they call a marine toilet, which is a flushing toilet. And that would go into a black water tank. And in, in that case, I'd have to maybe once a week connect a hose to the outside of the van and dump raw sewage into a special dump facility and I knew before I bought the van I never wanted to do that so this bad boy is made by nature's head and it's like a thousand dollar toilet but it's a composting toilet it uses no water and I'll do a separate video on that um, later on or you can find some online but basically it keeps the liquids and solids separate and it uses a natural composting process with uh, I use uh, coconut core, which is just ground up coconut husks, and it naturally composts the solids. And there's a little ventilation hose and a little wire with a tiny fan that's always on, and that goes up and out through the roof. And so uh, it doesn't stink. After getting used to it, I'm grossed out by normal toilets now, believe it or not. So. Um, it's fantastic. I don't have to deal with raw sewage. It's safe. It's sanitary. There's no smells. Um, definitely makes living in a van really, really, really great <laughs> when you don't have to ever deal with raw sewage. So best thousand bucks I spent on this van, the first upgrade that I did. When I want to take a shower, I actually purposely have not bolted the toilet down. I pull the toilet out and sit it in the aisle and pull out the little uh, footstool and the little trash can. And other than this little raised area, which was from the original toilet, I have the entire area to stand and, and take a nice hot shower. And I can almost stand all the way up. If I just kind of tilt my head to the side, then I, can, then I can stand up and take a shower. Instead of the original wet bath idea, which was to sit on the marine toilet with the lid closed, which would of course never come out of the bathroom and just sit and take a shower. And I don't want to sit and take a shower. So I stand and take a shower and it works great. Uh, so that is the van bathroom. And last but not least is the bed. Um, I chose this model Explorer after a lot of researching and looking around for a permanent queen size bed. Most of the vans in the back have some sort of a dinette where it turns into a bed at night and I didn't want to bother with that. So this is permanent. There's solid wood that goes all the way to the back and all the way to the sides. And I took the mattress out that came with the van and actually put the mattress in that I had in my apartment before I bought the van. Uh, I had to clip about three inches off the width, but the length is the same. It's, I think, what, 80 inches for a queen size. So um, I don't ever have to worry about moving anything. This is a solid permanent bed and it's just like in my apartment, same mattress and everything. Um, so I enjoy that a lot. Um, unfortunately, I can't enjoy this huge picture window in the back when I'm boondocking right now because I wanna be blacked out. In the future, with blackout curtains, that'll be easier to take out. But for now, I got the Reflectix. I actually painted the other side of the Reflectix black so you can't see it as much um, at night if you were to shine some headlights on it or whatnot. Um, quickly, some of these little cabinets. Most of these are kind of empty. I've got dirty clothes back there and some shoes. 
I mean, you see how far this the storage goes in. I've got my Bible and my journal, this mail from the P.O. box that I haven't gone through. Mostly empty. Um, I'm debating on taking this out. Most folks with Explorers take this out right away and put a TV, but I kind of like having this little kind of nightstand. Um, so, the jury's out on that. So we shall see. Leave my work shirt over. Uh, this is the largest cabinet inside the van, and it's mostly empty. Um, got some paperwork, some cleaning stuff. Keep some of my most used tools in here because I do lots and lots of projects on the van. Um, this is a huge wardrobe in here, but uh, yeah, it's mostly unused at the moment. But I'm still in the process of moving stuff around and always moving stuff around and trying new configurations. Um, and then up here, actually, this is also quite a big amount of storage. Uh, up here, I keep all my electronics. Well, the, the electronics that I want to have with me. Everything else is in my storage unit. So, stuff I use most often, chargers and whatnot, and then less often, electronics. Um, I bought a Surface Pro 3 for the van, and it's been awesome. I um, actually just bought a 12-volt um, power charger that goes straight into the cigarette lighter to save on electricity, which is great. GoPro case, uh, Canon T, uh, TI4, I guess it is. Uh, so plenty of space there. And this is my power meter. So I have, separate from under the engine, I have a house battery, which is under the step. And I just replaced it recently with a, house, a deep cycle house battery from Costco. The, it's not too bad for the price. It's just holding me over for a couple months until I, until I do my solar system and battery bank and whatnot. But you can see right now that I'm at 12 volts, uh, which is about 50%. Uh, you don't want to let a house battery, uh, deep cycle house battery, go below 50% or it'll start to damage it. But being that I'm only going to keep this one for a few months, um, that's just the way it is at the moment. So this tells me my voltage on my house battery and I actually have a little dinky 5 watt solar panel that does nothing. I'm hoping to do closer to 250 or 300 watts of solar at some point this summer. Uh, I think that's probably it. Cabinet under here, I've got some pots and pans, a little trash can. Um, if you'll notice on the floor, it's just this wood. And one of the first things I did is I ripped out the green carpet. It was not in bad shape. Um, that's in bad shape. It wasn't in bad shape, but it just was difficult to clean. And uh, once I ripped it out, I noticed that there was a little bit of stain and water damage. And so at some point I'm gonna replace all of this wood and then put something like a laminate flooring in just have this rug i mean just to give you an idea i put this rug in yesterday and it's already dirty in less than 24 hours it's just difficult to keep the the floor clean with carpet in my experience um, and that that's the original carpet up in the front so that was all the way through the van so um i guess that's about it for the moment the super super fast tour of the van um, I am going to post lots and lots of videos. I've been putting this one off because I'm a perfectionist and I wanted to get the best cameras and learn how to use this video editing software and whatnot and a year old by and I hadn't done anything. So here it is. One take, no edits, quick tour of the van just to get it out of the way so I can actually start posting videos on a regular basis. So um, if you are interested in this life or you have a van or you're considering living in an RV then stay tuned because I will start posting videos um, the YouTube channel you can get to from the website a simple ch uh, simple child that too a simple kid.com a simple kid.com and I'll tell you about that name more later or the Facebook is facebook.com slash simple kid not with the letter a facebook.com slash simple kid or the YouTube channel is asimplekid.com. Got it? Good. Thanks for watching. Sorry if the sound was terrible or if um, it was a little bit choppy, but you gotta start somewhere. Stop putting things off and just post videos. Thanks very much, everybody. Have a good day.